began in the early 1900s. A man by the name of Edward Murphy operated a horse carriage business called Pontiac Buggy. Edward Murphy saw the power of the automobile and became fascinated with the thought of starting his own manufacturing company. He spent the next several years developing his first automobile and by 1907 began production under the name Oakland Motor Company. Within just one year, he had already sold nearly 300 vehicles. They all ran on two-cylinder engines with five body styles to choose from. He was met with fierce challenges as Ford Motor Company had announced their new Model T, which led Edward Murphy to start doing business with a man named William Durant, the CEO of General Motors. Just one year later, Edward Murphy would die, giving General Motors the opportunity to obtain the remaining rights of Oakland Motor Company. By 1910, Oakland Motor Company would announce its new four-cylinder automobile called the Oakland Model 40 for a price tag of $1,600. Over the next 10 years, the company would announce six-cylinder and even eight-cylinder options but were met with quality control problems, with many customers complaining about the engines failing. Over the next following years, they would release a new Model 50 and Model 101 for only $895, being touted as the most economical automobile on the market. Later in 1926, Oakland Motor Company would debut the first vehicle in the Pontiac line, known as Series 627. Priced at $825, it was a massive success, going on to sell over 76,000 cars within the first 12 months of its release. It became the top-selling car in the United States the following year, ranking 7th in overall sales. By 1931, Oakland Motor brand would be dropped with the onset of the Great Depression, favoring the new division's line known as Pontiac. In 1933, Pontiac grabbed a huge piece of the automobile market by selling the best-priced eight-cylinder vehicle available, later announcing its new fiberglass panel design with engine compartments opening with the press of a button. The new torpedo vehicle was produced in three options, A-body, B-body, and the C-body. Sales were booming, with pre-orders overflowing, the company was behind on production. When it all came to a halt in February 1st of 1942, the United States would be pushed into years of war as World War II began and all automotive production plants were banned from producing any more vehicles. President Roosevelt would issue a government ban on all production of civilian vehicles and all automotive plants were ordered to be retooled for the manufacturing of war tanks, jeeps, airplanes, and other supplies needed for battle. Later in 1948, General Motors began production of their vehicles as the war came to an end. They produced the first automatic transmission, helping sales recover from the prior war ban on production. The prior torpedo models had now become outdated as they introduced a new chieftain line named after the Native American chief Pontiac. Over the next decade, Pontiac would grow to be one of the largest car manufacturers in the world, producing cars such as the Grand Prix in 1962, the GTO in 1964, Firebird in 1967, and the Grand Dam in 1973. But it would all slowly come to a halt as the US government began issuing new bills to reduce emissions in vehicles. The 1970s were met with increasing insurance and fuel cost for automobile owners. Looming federal emissions and safety regulations would eventually put an end to the unrestricted, powerful engines of the 1960s. By 1971, GM would issue a corporate edict mandating all engines be capable of using lower octane unleaded gasoline. During the mid-70s, all vehicles produced were downsizing and shrinking in length 
and width, along with smaller engines. Sales were fading away, as Pontiac was no longer the number one car producer in America, which led them to introduce the new wedge-shaped Firebird Trans Am in 1982 in hopes of attracting the muscle car buyers. By 1990s, Pontiac knew they needed to make a change in the market or risk going bankrupt, as they released the new family-friendly vehicles with its first minivan line, the Transport. By 2002, Pontiac announced it was discontinuing the Firebird Trans Am as a result of declining sales. Just six years later, General Motors would announce it was considering eliminating numerous brands, including Pontiac, in order to appease Congress in hopes of receiving a $25 billion loan to bail the company out during the financial crisis of 2008. On April 27, 2009, GM would announce that Pontiac would be dropped and that all of its remaining models would be phased out by the end of 2010. The Pontiac brand was pulled after the 2009 model year in Mexico, and the brand was renamed Matisse, selling only one vehicle to date, the Matisse G2. Thank you for watching. Make sure to give a small like or a comment below, which helps a small channel like us grow.